Today's episode will present a nuanced conversation. It is intended for a mature audience. I would like to send out a trigger warning for anyone that is easily triggered by the discussion centered around black women. Because we will discuss black women, we will generalize black women today. The goal of this conversation is not to have everyone agree with the subject or agree with the participants. However, it is to allow each listener to present their own perspective. All views are welcome. I encourage you to have an open mind and a softened heart. The hope is from this conversation, we can have an advanced conversation and we can advance our homes. We can advance our community. Well, let's break down a, a few things that you mentioned during the video, if you don't mind. Okay. Uh, okay. You said the you said the phrase, there's no in-between with us. Help us understand. What do you mean by that? <laughs> there is either a sister that's speaking just like me, like I meet women few and far between that are like, girl, you bad. You know, uh, all about the compliments, all about helping. Uh, they're just 100% genuine and legit. But then you got the other one. That's just downright nasty, um, jealous, envious. It's usually, they don't pick a trait. It's usually, <laughs> it's either all of them or it's none. You know, and, and <laughs> that's, that's baffling to me as well. There is no in-between. Like, I haven't, I haven't experienced the in-between. And if, if a woman was faking it, uh, it wasn't long before the jealousy, the envy, and all of that surfaced. So it's I've either experienced the good or the bad. Like I haven't, I haven't had a sister that was just tolerable, if that makes sense. It's either somebody that I can love and be your friend. It's like, girl, I can't deal with you. I'm not dealing with you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it makes complete sense, and it's something that you see often. You know, I grew up, my mom, you know, had both my parents were married, but I, I saw my mom have, yeah, they were married for 30 years, they eventually got divorced, but the common thought thing I saw with my mom, like, she can meet, she never met a stranger, essentially, like, everyone she meets, she, you know, become instant best friends, but it never lasts more than three months, you know, it, yeah. <laughs> like, there, it was hard to maintain relationships, and it seemingly, especially with another black woman. Uh, you, the next another thing you said there, you said when you get to my age, uh, we are the worst, and uh, I, and I thought that was super powerful. Well, I want to yeah. ask you in tw in twenty twenty four, what does it look like for an older woman to mentor a younger woman? Um, it's very difficult. Um, well, let me say this: this younger generation, they're not a generation that you can just tell anything to. They question everything. You know how our parents could just tell us something and we kind of roll with it. Uh, these young people check the source. So if you're trying to tell them <laughs> something and you're not living it, they're not listening to you. Mm. So when women are like, these young women, they, you know, you can't tell them anything. Um, they'll curse you out. Uh, this, this, and that. I'm going to be honest with you. That really hasn't been my experience. Because um, I don't really speak on something that I'm not. Uh, I, the rule in my house with my daughters is do as I do and not as I say, because that means that I have to hold myself to such a high standard. So uh, example, my daughter, my 13 year old um, was cursing one day and uh, I told my friend what she said. And she's like, are you going to address that? I said, yeah. She's like, well, is she going to be in trouble? I said, no. She said, why? I said, because I know exactly where it came from. <laughs> I said she I said she basically quoted me verbatim. She quoted me verbatim. I said, so that's not a punishable offense in my in my eyes. I said, but she can't keep her room nasty because I don't keep my house nasty. She can not keep up her hygiene because she didn't see me do that. She can't be rude to people because she didn't see me do that. You know what I mean? So it when I talk to these young women and I come in contact with a lot of them because I'm a retail manager. A lot of them work under me. My staff is normally, my part-timers are normally early 20s and teens because it's a part-time position. And they listen to me because I walk the walk. And so I think we just have a younger generation of women and, and just young people. They, they check the source. They're like, girl, how are you going to tell me that? And you're not doing it. <laughs> So, yeah. and I'm the same way. I'm like, you know, when somebody's giving me advice, I don't care who they are. Like, how can you tell me how to make a million dollars? My dad says all the time, and you've never done it. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, how, how can I trust your information when it doesn't seem like you trust your own information because you're not applying it to your own life? 
So Oof. while there are these young people, like we know, we know these crazy young people not to talk to. Like we know, you know, <laughs> but, but some of them are reachable. And I will say the young, the young women that I mentor indirectly, uh, they're receptive. They are receptive. I've had, you know, young ladies that have worked for me five, six, seven years down the line, I'll run into them or I see them on social media. They'll be like, oh, Miss Amanda, I remember when you told me this. Oh, I'm so glad you told me this. And I'm, you know, and, you know, they have applied that information to, you know, to their lives. And like I said, I don't tell them anything, first of all, that I haven't experienced or that I'm not trying to live out myself. So, yeah, I, I think the younger generation is reachable. But they're they're just gonna check the source. Like you got to make sure you on your stuff before you go trying to tell them anything. Period. Yeah. yeah, I think that the whole notion of do as I say, not as I do, has always been false. Honestly, we just find a way not to do it in front of you, but we still did it. Like yep. we took the we took the habits, you know. <laughs> I know I did. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Well, you're you're spot on because me and my wife we're set to have our first baby here in a few months, and I oh, told her, "Oh, uh, thanks a lot." I told her, "Look, babe, we're gonna be doers. You know, it's not about what we say; it's about what we do. And I'm not gonna tell my kid to not do something when they vividly see me do it every single day. Every so it's, single it's day. amazing mm-hmm. to hear you say, man. So I want to move on to something else you said here. You said you never saw the women that raised you act or talk negative towards younger women along those same lines. Now, there's a common rebuttal that I receive a lot, and I'm sure other people do, uh, from black women that say it's not all black women. You know, if you see negative black women, it's because it's the ones you hanging around. Yep. Um, how, how true is their statement? 1,000% false. That's 1,000% <laughs> false. And you know, because if anybody knows me, like, I'm very, <laughs> like, I'm very, very, very protective of myself, my energy, my spirit, uh, because if I don't do that, then I, I I can't be who I need to be to the people in my life. You know what I mean? So, and I'm very, very positive. Like, I really couldn't have made a video like that if I was op- the opposite of what I said. You know what I mean? Um, but what I think that I do where my where my mistake lies is I always try to see the good in people. You know what I mean? Like, I really, really, really do. And that goes back to, I can see the hurt in Black women. I can see the pain. I can see, I can I can pretty much read you and tell you what you've been through. And I know they can do the same thing to me um, without us having really to say a word or we may have a conversation. And from that conversation, I can just tell. And so what I, because I'm a Christian and I try to love people like God loves me, I go into this, oh, let me help you. Let me, let me embrace you. Let me, you know, let me be the person that, you know, uh, makes you feel better uh, because I know how you feel. And that I think a lot of people, they're not even, they don't even know how to accept it. A lot of black women don't know how to accept, they don't know how to accept it. But after reading the comments, it kind of made me understand why, because they've been experiencing the same thing. Mm. You know, they've been experiencing the same thing. So, uh, but the only, you know, thing, I, the drawback I have about that is you still don't have to be nasty. You still don't have to be rude, you know, about it. Like, if you don't want to communicate, if you don't want to make a connection with uh, with me, you don't have to be nasty about it, you know. But, no, I don't, that's not true. That That's not true at all. And I think I made the statement, like, that's, the, that's like saying, um, a woman that's been abused, you know, like she's being abused because she's asking for it. Like she's attracting that. That's that's not true. That's not that ninety percent of the women that are being abused. That that I would almost say a hundred percent. That's not true. Let's go.